Hi guys and welcome to this new project where we're going to edit a cinematic b-roll sequence as fast as possible inside of Premiere Pro in 9 steps. And the most beautiful thing is that you can always use those 9 steps later in every project that you're doing. For new people, hi, I'm Joey, I'm a filmmaker from the Netherlands and as a filmmaker I made a lot of uh, great marketing products for companies. But what I also love to do is just make a cool looking uh, cinematic uh, video with some footage you shot at an event or at a vacation or things like that. With these videos the story is not the most important thing and that is why you can always use this process of nine steps to create that video from the beginning to the end without spending hours of playing around with separate clips and trying to make something that you think is kind of cool. This seems like a long video but you can work together with me in this video. You can use your own footage to start editing and take it step by step through my instructions but you can also download all the footage that I use through the link in the description. In that way you can make the same product as me but still learn those 9 steps to use in your own future projects. I'm doing this inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, you can use every editing software that you want. You can also use every version of Adobe Premiere Pro that you want. But I'm recommending the industry standard Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're interested in using that too, then you can also check out the description for a link to the software Adobe Premiere Pro to download it with a free trial. So let's not talk any longer and start with the first step. Let's go. Step one, the reason you should always sort your footage. Seems like a very easy step, but it is something that people often forget. I will show you how I sort my footage. I will show you why I do that. And I will show you some other different ways to do it. And because we're working together at this point, you're seeing my screen and we're going to take a look at the file management ourselves. So if you downloaded the footage, then uh, you see these same three folders as I do at this point. So the footage is already kind of sorted. But how and why? First of all, I sort my footage always on the camera that I used. So in this way, you see a folder called GH5 and you see a folder called iPhone. So when I'm searching for that drone shot I took, I don't have to uh, go into a big folder with all the clips, but I can navigate to the drone folder. So it is not taking you extra time, but in the end, I know when I'm searching for a gimbal shot, I have to go to the folder of that camera. Another thing that doesn't take you extra time that I always do is sort it by date. If you have a shoot on multiple dates, you of course import the files at the end of a day. So you can really easily make a new folder with the date. And in that folder are again uh, the cameras you shot it with. You sort your footage so that when you're in the editing process, you know immediately where to find that one shot you took when you're thinking about that. So that's why you sort it on a really easy things like the camera you import your footage from, the date you import it on, or maybe a location because it's always shot chronological. For this simple example project, uh, sorting it by just the camera is enough. Make your clips editing ready by trimming them. Uh, what does that mean? Do you really have to take a look at all the clips? How can you do this fast and efficiently? Uh, and how do I choose which clip I want to use? Yes or no. So I opened up Premiere Pro. If you don't know how to do that already, then I have a basic uh, Adobe Premiere Pro course. So then you should definitely check that one out. We're opening up our first folder. So in this case, the GH5 folder. And we're going through every clip that is in this folder. And what are we looking for? We're looking for if we want to use a part of that clip in our video. So we click on the first one, we double click on it, and then we will just watch the clip from the beginning. And if it is something we want to use in the video, which this isn't, then we're gonna make it in and out point. I think this is a nice one. So I want to use this shot. So we're making an in point. So at this point, we're making an out point. So what we do now is we will drag this video clip already on the timeline and now we have our first clip and then we're going to the next one and we do the same thing over and over again we're scrolling through everything so we made the in and the out point we drag the video only on the timeline but at this point we already can do uh, some other things like for example slow motion uh, because when I'm taking a look at this clip, I know this clip is shot in 60 FPS and I think it will look way nicer if this clip is in slow motion. So at this point, we're already go to the timeline. 
we're zooming in taking the clip and putting it on 50 percent slow motion but this is a super uh, a raw selection of the files that i want to use so uh, we don't have to make that decision right away at this point but if you already know that you want it in slow motion this is the time to uh, apply that uh, as you can see i put those files next to each other on the timeline and that is making the video editing ready we do that so we already have a selection of all the files that we want to use we already have a vibe and a feel of that file uh, and we don't have to take a look at all these files over here again if we're done uh, checking them and selecting them uh, right at the beginning so that is what i will do uh, now but remember and that is super important is that it is uh, super raw you have to make decisions really fast so i'm now going through all the clips make a really quick selection uh, and then i will show you how the timeline looks when i'm done with that So hi guys for you it was really fast for me it was like 20 minutes of uh, scrubbing through all the footage and selecting them and if you do that then uh, my timeline looks something like this now it is super simple it is super boring but there are now a lot of clips just uh, behind each other on the timeline this is all the footage uh, that I want to use in my video. And now we're at step number three in this part of the video, we're gonna change the order of our clips to build up our story. But how should the story be built up? Let's go. A video always has a begin, a middle and the end. First, we have to decide which story we want to tell. And with this video, it's super simple because it was a boat ride. So what do we want to tell? We want to tell, hey, this is the boat we went on this is how it was there this was how it looked uh, this is what we did and then we ended it with a sunset so that is the story we want to tell so to make that story we're first going through all the footage again and then we can already pick some uh, videos out that we want in the beginning so for this video what is a nice beginning to start with I think it's important to start with the uh, with the boat ride like which boat are we on so before we going into like everything that happened on the boat uh, we want to start the video with um, a global impression of the boat I can really quickly scroll between these videos because I already saw them uh, it gives me a good impression on what kind of videos I shot again to decide how I want the order of the uh, the clips so over here you see already that uh, the uh, sunset was moving in um, so of course the sunset is at the end of the video and I don't want to have the sunset at the beginning of the video so for me that means that everything behind this video is a sunset so everything over here will be at the end of the video so with these clips we're gonna build up the beginning I see three things happening the first one is uh, like close-ups of the boat and then we see uh, people people working there people having a fun time so I think that's that is a, a good way um, to uh, build up the story that is this is the big uh, boat we're on here are some close-ups of the boat and this is what we were doing there so these are already uh, three different parts of the story of the video okay so now we're going into these parts and we're deciding uh, how we want the order of that so then we have the first four clips, then we go to the second part and we do the exact same thing. At this point, I hope it's clear uh, why I decided to, um, to split them up in different parts. And then uh, I'm going deeper into these parts and try to decide which order uh, nicely fits the story. So we're not looking at the length of the clip. We're not looking at how we're going to use this clip but we're just deciding the order. I will also do that with the rest of this video and then I will come back to you. Hi 
Hi guys, it's me again and that can only mean one thing. We're done with deciding which order we want the last part. So at this point, if we're taking all the different parts that we uh, looked at today, we already decided how the story of our video will be. We build up our story now. But another good way to build up your story is based on locations. Uh, you do that most often with travel videos. And then you don't have to have all the different locations in a chronological order, but all the footage on one location have to be together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring these video clips alive. We're creating the vibe and we're creating how we want our video to feel. So what do we mean with creating the vibe? Uh, we're creating the vibe, I mean, we're putting a mood, a feeling on the video. And the most important thing to create that vibe to the viewer of your video is by putting music underneath it. The best way to create the best vibe is to know the vibe that you're making your video in before you're shooting your video. But there are a lot of times when you just shot some nice footage that you want to edit together. And that is also why this course is created with these nine steps. If you are a person, the smart person, that downloaded the example files in the beginning of this video, then you find a folder called audio inside of those example files folder. If you're not already did that, you still want to do it, you still can do it with the link underneath in the description. But then you have a folder called audio and in that folder, there is a folder called music. And in that folder music, there are four songs I already selected for you. So let's listen to those four songs and let's find out which vibe goes together with which song. First one. It's kind of a happy song with a super clear beat. But it's kind of fast pacing, it's not like a really slow song. So the second one. Mm. Second one, also kind of happy, but way slower and maybe a little bit romantic. Okay, this is also a slower song, also with a guitar, but with a little bit more beat. This is kind of in between slow and fast. Okay, last one. Yeah, I would call this a more fast pacing song with more beat. So you can choose now one song from these four songs. These four songs are all copyright free songs. Uh, copyright free songs are super important because when you're not using a copyright free song, you have a chance that if you made the video, you put it online, that you get sued for using a song uh, without paying for it. So these four songs are all from a site called YouTube Audio Library. YouTube has its own audio library where you can find a lot of songs that you can use in your YouTube videos. Over here, you can uh, search songs on, for example, uh, the mood happy or romantic or inspirational. Inspirational is of course a little bit slower than happy. But for now we're gonna use one of the songs I gave you so you can edit together with me. And the song that I'm gonna use is the first one. And a good tip to search for a song is to import them all inside of Adobe Premiere Pro because then you can look at the songs one by one and you can also see the audio wave lines. So you can see that over here there are some there are some points where the drop of the music is kicking in and that are perfect points to cut the music and stick them together to make it shorter or longer. Editing on a beat is something we're gonna discuss in a later episode. But that is why I'm using this song, but make your own decision on which song you want to use and which vibe you want to create. So now we're gonna make the beginning. Hook them by making the beginning. What is hooking people and how should the beginning be and why do we start with the beginning? We already know what our beginning will be and that is this video that you see over here. Of course, we can make a little change uh, about that, but mostly this is the order we will be working in. So let's put 
these clips on the side and just start with the beginning. And then we're taking a look at the music. We start with the beginning to see how much room we need with the introduction shot. So to decide that we're taking a good listen to the music. And at this point you can hear the rhythm of the music uh, and it's always nice to have a beginning with a title and then a drop and then to start the video on a, a drop on a single uh, on a special beat in the music so if we listen to this song you can see that of course the beats are on these four points another four three four and then after eight seconds, then there is another thing happening, a new rhythm. And I think that's the perfect way to really start the video. You can also set a marker by hitting the M. Uh, so we always know that we have until this beat drop to create our beginning. How much room then do we have inside of the music? That is this whole part. That already looks like a good beginning, but I think it's way too long. And because these four beat drops are repeating two times, we can also start our video over here. Then it starts like this. And that is kind of nice. This is just taking a look. How do I start the video and how much room do I need for my beginning? Maybe you need more room. You need four, five, six shots to create that beginning with the title. And that will look something like this. Another video that I shot in Mallorca in Spain is something different because that is a really fast pacing video. So the beginning is super, super fast, a little bit of chaos. And then after like just a couple of seconds, it switches immediately to a super calm title. <laughs> Hooking people in the beginning is to uh, grab their attention, is to grab their attention from the start so they're excited to watch the rest of the video. It doesn't have to be hard, it's just about a simple feeling that you're creating. Make your videos like a beautiful symphony and that is because a beautiful symphony is perfectly paced from the beginning to the end and it's like you're surfing on a wave. It feels super smooth and that is also what we want to do with our footage onto the music. So let's go. So because we already did a lot of work, it's not very hard to do this episode. If you do this too early, then it is kind of hard. We have our music and that music exists of beats. So if I would lay a video on every single finger snap I did, you can create a really smooth video that looks already really nice. What I always do, and that's also why a lot of people ask me questions when they see my timeline, is I put the footage on top of each other. If I put everything on top of each other, I can just change this one video, but this video and this video, the timing of that is gonna be the same. So of course you can't do this forever. So once in a while you have to start over from uh, the beginning because otherwise you get way too many layers. But I think four or five layers on top of each other is easy to work with. So at this point we can count the beat. And we can also do it even faster and then you get this. So in theory, it doesn't matter how fast you make your video as long as the uh, new cuts, the new videos fit on the music. Uh, with that in mind, you can take a look at, okay, which videos do I want to have longer and which videos do I want to have shorter? One last important thing is that in the music, there are uh, different parts where there is starting a new rhythm. Uh, that's also what we made our beginning on. 
So it's nice to have in those rhythm transitions a new part of the video beginning. So that is something to think about while editing this video. I'm going to do that now and I will show you in a second what I did and why I did it. Hi guys, I'm back and what I did is the first 20 seconds of the video. It is now just playing with the footage. It's just listening to the beat and putting those videos on the beat. Uh, and what I'm doing now is uh, I made a, a raw montage of the beginning. And you also see that this beginning part ends when the rhythm of the music changes. So that means that I had to fit everything I wanted to use from here to here. So for me that's just like a puzzle to fit everything onto the music. But now first I'm going to the middle part. I will make a montage of these video clips over this music. So I will see you again if I made the middle part like a beautiful symphony. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the middle part. In the time lapse, you saw me do a lot of cutting. Uh, I cut a lot of music away. So we have a small a middle part, but the middle part in the beginning are now super smooth uh, together. So now we're going to the end part. And the end part of the music is super long, so that can be much shorter. So I also have to make cuts in the music again. Now we're creating the ending. So I was editing the end and that is really uh, fast pacing as you can see. But then I figured out, okay, so I'm here now. I still have these uh, five shots. I know these last two are very calming and it's towards the end, but I still have this whole music piece left to end the video. And the ending of a song is always nice. You always want to use the ending. So then I listened to the song, what part can I make cuts to? To make it shorter and then i figured out maybe i can delete this everything of this and i can use only this end so a little fade transition amazing so now we know where to end so i will see you again when i'm done Hi guys, welcome back. I succeeded, it worked. I put it everything at the end, uh, after the sunset, underneath this last music part. So, if you're curious how long I worked in real life on this episode, that is one hour, 12 minutes and five seconds already. And now it's nice to see how this video is built up. We have the first part, then we're going to the middle part, that's this part, and then we're coming into the ending, which is this part. We make that another color. So you can really see how this video is built up. We have a different part of the song for the first part, different part of the song for the middle and a different part of the song for the ending. So this is how this video is built up. This is the raw cut. So, and at this point, we're taking a look at the effects and transitions we can put in our video to spice it up a little bit, to give it the wow factor. So let's go. To do all of that, I always start just at the beginning. And then I go through every clip. And if I think mm, this is a boring clip or we can do something else with it or we can do speed ramping up, I immediately do it. So if we take a close look at the beginning, then I already talked about putting text over our beginning shot. But of course, this is a workflow tutorial and not a, a Premiere Pro tutorial. So I will not do every effect uh, with you together, but I will of course show you all the things I will do on this video. 
and we're back and I made a beginning. So then we're moving on and right away I saw something I want to do and that is a speed ramping on this first clip because listen to the shift in the music. It is also my best friend when shooting handheld is the warp stabilizer because the footage was a little bit shaky. So if I put some small warp stabilizer of like 10% is enough I think. So we get this. Then this is like a very simple boring shot. So maybe we can do a really simple zoom in. We can also do the same zoom in on here. This shot is a little shaky. Oh, that's better. As you can see, I do this kind of fast. Okay, so that was a little look inside of the kitchen uh, until here. You see that I make very fast decisions, but then I will look at this video another 20 times to see if I can do some more or if maybe it's too much and I will put something down. So I will do that over and over again. I will scrub back, look at it again, and then think about new effects I can put it on. So I will do some effects on the rest of the video now and then I will see you again. And it's me again. I will put on my AirPods. I had those in for a better understanding of the music because also a lot of effects are based on the music. Now I will go through all the other things I did. So we're just going through this. Um, some things I put a warp stabilizer on. I will mention the shots I did it on. But remember always warp stabilizer is there to make a shot a little bit better not to fix a shot if a shot is not usable without warp stabilizer you should definitely never use warp stabilizer to fix things because then you definitely will see that there's warp stabilizer on that shot okay the next one uh, I did a zoom in as you saw uh, and also this one it's kind of a clean shot with a little bit of zoom in because then it's a more natural transition between this one and this one so then this one and the transition and that's why you saw this shot behind each other with that pen uh, before because in my head this transition was already applied it's a half of a slide down because I already bent the camera down in the first shot also transitions is something you should be careful with because if you put too many transitions in your video it will look very cheap so then the next thing I did was I put it a little bit speed ramp on here and that is also because of the music it's like bam so I really liked that. So then over here, these shots were already more fast pacing. So I did not do any crazy effects on that part, I think. But over here, there's a, like a really noticeable click in the music. So I wanted to do something with that. So then I reversed the speed on uh, the click in the music. <laughs> then this is all normal things and also in the last part uh, this speed ramping I already did in a last episode and then the last part is without any crazy effects so we're almost done step number eight but still super important step sound effects how should you use sound effects and which sound effects should you use so that's what we're going to discuss first of all the sound effects that we need are natural sound effects sound effects that you would also hear when you record really clear audio of that moment so how should you start collecting those sound effects to start with that uh, you need a place to get sound effects from I told you before about Epidemic Sound. That's where I get all my sound effects from. Those are paid platforms. What you can do to get sound effects for free is go to YouTube or go to uh, Google, but then you have to search for no copyright sounds. So how do you know which sound effects you have to look for? That is just pure watching the video. And at the same time, you think about the sound 
that you should hear at that moment. Most of the time I use one or two sound effects over the whole video, definitely when a video is shot in one location. And at this point, that one location is in this boat. So the two big sound effects that I want to use in the whole video are definitely water and wind. So let's find those sound effects. So what you have to do is you have to keep in mind when you're listening to the sounds, what you want. There, on this one, there's also some uh, background sound. So I think this one is nice. Then again, I want wind noise. So wind. So I find the windstorm and then I have two big sound effects that I can use throughout the whole video. So minus five decibels is uh, nice to bring down the music a bit so we can better work with the sound effects. The sound effects are more clear, but the music is still the main source. Sound effects are always too loud. So you always have to put them down. Okay, at this point, minus 15 is nice for the beginning because in the beginning, the water can be louder, but when the video starts, so over here, the water should be way less loud. So then we go to minus 20, maybe minus 22. And that's nice. Now it's, a, now it's a background noise. And we can keep that until the whole video because everything is shot on that boat. We're already looking at these parts because here the music gets louder and here the music gets even more loud. And then we have one big sound effect and we can do that the same with the windstorm. Of course, the windstorm has to be softer than the waves, but it has to be subtle. Otherwise, it's super cheap and fake. Then we have unlimited layers underneath each other to work on sound effects. I'm gonna be honest with you, you can do this as crazy as you want. Over here, there's an example of a timeline that is uh, on a really short video, but with a lot of sound effects with everything that's happening over there. It's still super clean, but it's also kind of crazy looking. I'm gonna be honest with you that this video is not a video where you should use a lot of sound effects. It's not super exciting to have a lot of sound effects. The music is kind of very upbeat, so that's also a reason why you shouldn't use a lot of sound effects. But I will definitely watch the video now and I will take a close look uh, and I will imagine what kind of sound will fit underneath that part of the video. Oh, of course, transitions are always a good timing to put some sound effects underneath it. Ah. Of course, the saxophonist. And the thing with these sounds is that you should fade them in because otherwise out of nowhere, there is a saxophonist playing, but you can do that before it is even visible what is going on and after the clip is already done. So at this point, you know what I'm doing. So I'm going to find on my own some other sound effects and I will show you which one I found and how I used them uh, later. Okay, hi guys, we're back. And there are a couple of things I added. So for example, first I found a, a real catamaran sound effect. So that was a really strong wave sound effect, but I've put it that underneath this shot. And then this one came. For this, I wanted that change sound effect. So I found two sound effects. One is this one. And the other one is this one. So I added them together, so then it sounds something like this. Then, for this part, I did not want to use sound effects, but there was again a, a saxophonist. So I was searching for another sound effect of a saxophonist, which was like really nice, but then I remembered, wait a second, maybe the audio of the video itself is kind of nice. So I searched for that and for this video, it was not really nice, but for this video, it was kind of nice. Yeah. 
So I was like, oh, why not use that again? Then I searched for a flapping sale. I was not able to find it on the platforms. So I searched for it on YouTube and there I found a pirate seal flapping the wind sound effect. And I found that for free. And that sounds something like this. So I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. I definitely want to use that. And then to end it, uh, we have, of course, this video with the, again, the uh, waves slapping to the side of the boat. So for that, I used the same sound effect as I did on the beginning. And that's just it for the sound effects that I used in this video. So with some subtle changes, you can spend hours and hours and hours on sound effects. You can make it as crazy as you want, as long as you keep it subtle and then step number nine in this last step we're going to take a look at color grading color correction everything that has to do with colors and how you should do it how i do it and what you definitely should not do so let's go you have different options to do color grading but before color grading there is another thing you should take a look at and that is color correction what is color correction color correction is making sure that every video clip in your video is looking kind of nice exposure wise so at that point you're looking at how bright your videos are and is that good enough and then you can already see for example that this video clip is way darker than this one first we have to go through all the clips and we have to make sure that every clip is exposed the same way so the color correction we're doing on the clip itself so we're selecting the clip and then we can go to basic corrections and there we can for example play with the exposure and now this is more in the style of the other clips so we're going through just watching the video it's all fine the exposure is not off like a lot maybe this video because the water is not as bright as on the other videos over here the highlights are extreme because of the sun in the water <laughs> These shots are of course darker, but that's also because uh, it is sunset. That's it. That's how we fixed our color correction. As you can see, really small changes. I just picked out the videos that are not the same exposed as the other ones. Now we're going to do some color grading. And color grading is like putting a filter on your Instagram pictures. First of all, you should create a adjustment layer. I already did that so I can grab this adjustment layer. I will make it as long as needed for the whole video. And then we're going to put the effect on the adjustment layer. So we're not putting the effect on every single clip, but on one single layer. And then everything underneath that adjustment layer will have that filter so you can make your own filter you can make it as professional as you want but we keep it simple so i use lots and what is a lot a lot is a filter you can select to put over your video adobe premiere has some uh, standard uh, luts on their own uh, you can also buy a lot of luts but the more you're used to the luts that you uh, once bought or downloaded the more you know which lut will fit the vibe of your video so for me i know that there is a super super famous lut called teal and orange it is a look that is used by a lot of people so it's a little bit overused but there is one type of video that i like it on a lot and that is that beach vibe that blue water beach vibe guess what we are making at this point this is the first one this is the second one yeah i think the the second one is way better but the intensity is way too much so i'll put it first on 50 and then i will scrub through the footage if that is to begin with the basic look I want to go for. And now we can look at every single clip that is in the video to see if, if the look is also great on that specific clip. So now we're scrubbing through all our footage to see if this is on every clip still where we want to go for. But let's say that for this clip, this filter is a little bit too extreme. Then what I will do is I will take the scissors tool and I will just cut the adjustment layer on the same size as this clip. I will select the adjustment layer and I will put the intensity down. In this case, I also liked it on this shot, so I'm not doing that on uh, this one. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I promise I'm really honest with you. I thought I would have a lot more cuts between some clips to put the filter softer, but that isn't the case for this video. You can see in this video, I did that. You see all kinds of different parts of the adjustment layer. Every single part uh, of that adjustment layer is the opacity different. But it's nice that on this video, it's looking all good. And that means that we hit comment S, which is save the project. And then we hit comment M, which in Premiere stands for export the video. And with exporting the video, we're done guys. We made this video from the beginning to the end and I'm proudly presenting you my Cypress Catamaran VIP Cruise video, the official end result. So what did we do? We made a video from the beginning to the end, from step one to step nine. And after step nine, you're ready to export your video. This video wouldn't be the same if you skip one of those nine steps. If you do that, you will spend one way too many hours with editing the video itself, or the video wouldn't look as good as it is now. So I hope you liked this longer form style tutorial. I'm planning to make a lot more in-depth videos like this so if you want to keep up to date that you can of course subscribe to this channel i'm also very curious which new things you learned in this video uh, comment that underneath this video so we can start a discussion about our workflow that will be very nice then there's only one other thing i can say and that is i hope to see you the next time here on shoot dead video bye